I have a friend that's played it. I need you to get them to play DMC5. And then I need you to be around them when Dante starts dancing with his hat on. Oh my god, I've seen And just clips. see their face and they're like, huh? Because they've never played it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Recon Roundabout. I know we're back from the uh, Christmas holiday season, but today we have Cross as our eighth episode. Cross, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, good, man. Good. I'm glad, um, you know, I think the beginning of this is really um, nice to kind of touch on the more like generic questions like how was your holidays and all that. Yeah. I was extremely sick <laughs> what, I was did sick you, for nine days <laughs> did you get the viv no i didn't i didn't get that i don't know what i had i tested negative but jesus lord i was like bedridden for nine days oh, it was God. awful yeah i got sick last week for some reason too but besides that i mean the holidays weren't bad at all i'm not much of like a partier though so like all that stuff kind of like flew by like just another week because i still had to work Oh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So, um, okay, cool. Well, going into kind of the unit, Cross, your, your rank says CL, but I know CL is kind of the more generalized. So, like, what what are you actually considered? Uh, well, I am a first lieutenant in the Kingdom of the Monkeys, a.k.a. Monka Detachment Lead. And, um, and, and how long have you done that for? Uh, well, actually, just the other day, I was my six month anniversary of being the lead. Before that, I was essentially two IC for about a year before that. Cool. Okay. So, and did you get Monka lead from being a CL, or did that kind of just come hand in hand? Like, did you get CL mm. and Monka lead, or? I was CSS when I got up to Monka lead, and then just kind of promoted after that. And, and kind of. For people who wouldn't understand, for like maybe like first time listeners and all that stuff, like what, what does that mean? Like what is being like Monka lead, you know, and all that really entail? Like if you're explaining it to someone that's never heard about it before, oh, it's a lot of paperwork. No, it's uh, it's essentially I lead two teams of four guys, uh, well five guys count the medic. And we have big jetpacks. We jump around. We help out the infantry and make sure that people are nice and safe. Uh, I, as the leader, I do a lot of back end stuff, making sure, you know, our paperwork's all sorted. People are disciplined if they need to be, which thankfully my guys don't be, don't need. Um, and I just kind of handle all the the bureaucratic officer leadership stuff mostly. Yeah, that's what's up. I mean. <clears throat> probably one of the more important things even though i feel like people especially when it comes to arma one of those things that i feel like people don't uh grasp usually is like the bureaucratic stuff that happens in the back background because even though this is a game i feel like you're still dealing with like people you oh yeah this I mean? is a this is a unit of like 240 people or so so you know when anything needs to happen it's gonna affect a lot of people and people don't quite realize how that can get hitched up up the chain so Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, do you um do you work with a lot of like Gark members too, or are you pretty like internal, I guess? Uh we've been pretty internal uh for a while before obviously we've had our uh slight problem with billets we've had recently. But when we were up to full strength, we were working quite a lot with particularly the two twelfth, one oh first and uh, yeah, mostly just those two. Uh, but I did want to work more with the 85th, mm -hmm. 27th, and 501st. Uh, so, yeah, I, I heard that Qual and you guys were talking about something going on with the 501st tomorrow. What is what what is that, essentially? Oh, it's just a little little guy, Conqueror, uh, decided to talk to me, reach out after he was talking to Bardock. And they're doing a squad training coming off of their winter stand down. Okay. And uh, he asked me to gather a squad's worth of people to go help with that. So we're going to go have fun and just do a little fun up over them and help with their squad training. That's what's up. That's fine. I'm sure. I, I, um, 
I don't think I've really been over to the 501st ser- servers just because I feel like every time they're running an op of whatever that I can go, I'm at, like, work or something. It sucks because, um, I don't know. I love I love a lot of the guard guys. I think that's probably – and I know I've said it in, like, I swear on every podcast. But it is it is one of the biggest things about, Oh yeah, like, the unit that's actually really fun is, like, going over and talking to, like, your might as well be cousins. Um, yeah. You know, I, I love a lot of the 501st yeah. guys. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the best part about their unit, them being so big for, for us in Gark and the context of Gark, is pretty much from any time between, like, 10 in the morning to, like, 4 in the morning. <laughs> uh, if you go there, there is a fun up running non. Absolutely. Almost always. And absolutely. It's, it's like, if I ever have an Arma fix and we're not running anything here, I'll just go over and hang out with those guys. They're awesome. Probably. Most most definitely, dude. Are you, um, so, you, you were 2IC for a while, but how long in the unit? Like, have you been? Like, years? I, I joined, yeah, years. I joined, uh, so this, the unit was refounded after some of the issues it had in late 2019, I would say. I think mm-hmm. it was, like, October or uh, maybe September. I joined tail end of 2019, right at the beginning of 2020, so I've been here a little over three years at this point. Damn. Um... God, did you do you ever think you were gonna get into Monka and like be where you are now? Like, was it always kind of like your goal? Well, for the longest time, I was a squad lead, and I really didn't think I was going anywhere else with squad lead. I had when we opened second platoon, I helped platoon lead a lot, that a lot. Mm-hmm. I helped uh, get that build up with Scorch and them. Um, I really didn't think I was really going to go, go anywhere else other than squad lead. But then work got hectic for me, so then. I had to step back from my squad lead billet because of that. I wasn't really able to be around very much. And when I came back, uh, Scorch had got with me and said, hey, uh, we're looking to form some new detachments. He informed me about what Ranite was uh, conceptually at the time and then Munka, as well as some other things that were in the pipeline that I don't think ever came out, but there were, there were things we talked about. And I said, well, if if I can get into it, I'd like to do Munka, you know, to some degree, be a little jumpy boy. Right, because, well, was Monka, like, as as established then as it was now? Oh, no, like, it, it's only about a year and a half old. Like, Falcon, Mauser, and I founded the, the program. No uh, shit. Like, a year and a half ago, like, last, se- not September of 2022, but, like, September of 2021, I think, is when we founded it. Okay, sure. so you're, like, fucking Gen 1. Oh, yeah, yeah, we were the first three. That's crazy. That's fun. That must be, like... Such a thing to just to have in your back of your head. Like, when you do yeah. this, and I'm, I'm sure, like, can you... Yeah, geez, that's crazy. I mean... I think about, I think about the Firewatch. Uh, so, I don't know if you've talked about Firewatch, but if you haven't, Firewatch is essentially this Gark thing where we just all literally go around and have, like, a fun up where we sit around a fire. So, there was a Firewatch we had where Mauser, Falcon, and I got our own fire across the salt pits of Altus and sat around this fire and, for about an hour and drafted the Monka documents <laughs> at a Firewatch. Dude, that's how it works. I mean, God bless Trill in this one. Um, he doesn't deserve all the hype because his ego is sky high. Because, you know, he's like the medic dad. <laughs> and I'll say it to his face. But what it's his... Um, love the fact that he was able to culminate these medic ranks that have happened. Because, so essentially, uh, long and short, not to spend too much time on it. Just because, you know, you're the focus, not the medic ranks. But... Um, it is kind of just a new thing that happened. Anyway, um, Troll spent a lot of time to bring together the medic ranks in a way that it, it just kind of gives the medics a little bit more of a standpoint and like, um, a difference to like the unit. So like, you know, like, okay, well, you know, clone medic insert, whatever rank you have, um, here is you know, in the lobby, he can, you know, if he wants to be a medic, he's definitely the more trusted person. And you also can like differentiate seniority of like the medics, um, at a glance as well. And so I really appreciate all the hard work he's done with that. And there's so many other medic things coming down the pipe pipeline. And unfortunately I've been, um, like, I don't even know how to say it. Just busy, busy, busy. Because on top of the work that I'm working right now, I actually just got um, certified to sell insurance. So on top of my 40-hour work week, I also have about 20 other hours of the week that I spend 
like networking and making phone calls and selling. So I am on the work days busy. Um, and so like Snapper and Trill definitely spent a lot of good time putting those together and that's awesome. But I mean, I think that having, um, that standpoint of like, you were the first of this group to actually create something a part of that like even this podcast in itself cross like being able to say that i my name is attached to this just like your name is attached to monka like the jump yeah. troopers your name is on there and it will and it will be forever as long as this unit's around you'll you know you're gonna be here and i think that that is awesome even if it's all you know it's a game but you still affect people i feel like well, yeah, when you when you play Arma, it is a game, but a lot of it really is community. And I think a oh, lot of yeah. people forget that. And uh, and I'm really glad that a, there's a good chunk of us that haven't forgot that. Yeah. I feel like when we do forget that, that's when the cataclysm yeah, will be. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, I mean, it, it is true. Like, I think that, like, God, the amount of conversations that I've sat and talked to people who are having bad days up till four in the morning are, like, you know, at least once or twice a week you know, that you're like helping someone through something or you're just, you're feeling bad yourself. And so you're just talking with your friends for hours, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's worth it. But, you know, speaking of friends and stuff like that, uh, to kind of la- lateral into this, um, you talk to me about playing Dungeons and Dragons, whether it be oh, like yeah. actual D and D or just homebrew D and D you play D and D. Um, do you play D and D with a group in the ninety first, and you kind of like like your own small cell of people, or is it a whole separate? Uh, so uh, as I was saying before, I haven't played in about I would say like six or more months. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've wanted to play, I just haven't had really a group to play with. Um, and it was at the time ninety first members, but they have all left. It was, uh, if you remember them, it was Ishi, Courtney, Freyer, Trauma, and Smig. Mm -hmm. Uh, was my D and D group at the time. And we had a campaign we ran for about, I would say, six months before that. Uh, we were running a module. Um, so you have you played any of the modules? Uh, you know, I know about them, but like I, I, I think personally, I've always just made shit up. Yeah, we, we, we wanted to do that. But since Frere's like first time really DMing something long, he mm-hmm. wanted to uh, do a module to get used to DMing. Right. Uh, just so he had like a, a framework to work with. We did... Um, what was it uh wrath of the dragon queen or no no or not and that's i'm combining two it's it's one of the tiamat ones i can't remember what it was called but anyway it ended up breaking apart because we skipped like a whole like three hour segment of the game because <laughs> something in the module was really poorly explained and we followed it and we literally skipped a massive plot point and we all got frustrated and that fell apart and we just haven't got back together since. that's funny but i had a lot of fun i played a half orc barbarian a literally Ooh. man literally too angry to die that's what's up. Are you usually going for those like frontline classes, or do you try to like mix it up? I, I mix it up. I play. I usually play half casters. Um, so like bard, uh, warlock, or uh, stuff like that. Then um, what? What made you go to bar- barbarian? Did you just want to try something I new? I just wanted to be angry bonk man. And plus, <laughs> uh, everybody had already kind of like said what they wanted to. We right. Had, our party was two monks. Uh, was two monks a wizard, a sorcerer, and then myself as a barbarian. So I was like. I need to pick something tanky, otherwise we're not gonna have a good time. Dude, and a funny story. I missed a session. Freya, because we were we were bombing mm. combats, mm. absolutely bombing combats, and I missed a session, so they just went without me. And I was like, "That's fine, just go without me." And uh, Freyr messages me. He's like, "Dude, I did not realize how tanky you were and how much damage you soak in every <laughs> combat encounter. They almost TPK without me." That's. <laughs> It was so funny. That's fucking gold. Well, dude, like, so the reason that I think the homebrew works so well is that we have, in my friend group, um, you would think that we're, like, we all play sports, but we also are, like, ex- aggressively nerdy. And, like, I love writing stories. So when it came time to, like, bringing a and d group together, I wrote a story of just what I wanted. And obviously D&D, when you especially include a lot of, like, um like talking and stuff like that, the stories are going to go any way that the the characters want it to go. So I would leave it very open-ended so that they would kind of just, I would like think on the fly. And like, that's why I never really use modules is because it was very one-sided and I would always try to come up with like 
a um what are they called um you know the beings that can like mimic other people so they can like turn into other pe people they're called um uh, changelings or yeah no. like no. um one of them was that a changeling was one of the adventurer's fathers and they had to find out, you know, it, like halfway through the story that it was that their father died and then was like turned into a demon. And their real their like fake father was a changeling. And that's why he never looked much older, even 20 uh, years in the year. Yeah. So like you would have stuff like that. But I, I would give them the premise of like, you know, this is where you are. Go do things, you know. And I, I think that I like D&D &D because of that, because it does give you like. A huge amount of storytelling ability. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of improv and stuff like that. And it's it's ironic because when you think about it, if you look at like how Zeus works and stuff like that in Arma, mm -hmm. Arma really is just like Milsim D and D. <laughs> it's like Milsim oh, D and D the video game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like you literally could just have actors who will tell you where another objective is, and you have yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, it's immersive as you want it to be. Yeah, I'm so trying like, to get a group together to do something like like that with Warhammer. I see. And I, I really can't super into Warhammer. I, I know enough about it, but I'm not not huge into it personally. I I don't know. I think that it as far as D and D, it has all the necessaries because you have like orcs and elves and fucking humans and you know yeah like so you do have a lot of like similarities. But, like, even on um, the D&D &D tangent, like, do you, have you tried to always stick kind of to, like, the rules, or do you kind of just, like, pick, uh, pick me, and choose? The, for me, it depends on the group. If I DM, I, I heavily modify a lot of rules, mm -hmm. but I do, like, I, not really a session zero, but almost a session zero where I establish what I'm changing and how right. I'm changing it. So that way I don't, you know, a player doesn't roll for something and then I do something. They're like, well, we didn't, you know, I didn't know you were going to do that or whatever. Right. So I always just kind of try to establish the ground rules beforehand. Yeah. Um, like for me, for example, it, for how D&D &D works, if you're if you're going to roll like a strength check, right, it's either pass or fail. There is nothing else. But for me, if I'm DMing and say it's like a 10 and you roll like a nine. I might be like, eh, you you pass it, but it was it's a real fucking struggle or something like that. Like I I do context based on the role, right? To see, you know, if you're close, I'll give it to you or something like that, or or you, I'll see how you barely fail and maybe get something out of it. Stuff that the rules technically don't say because it's either pass or fail. Oh yeah, well like st like stuff like that. I feel like just adds a story because you could have yeah. like a character tries to lift a door open, but he only can get it enough that you know like the other characters can get through, but not the big guys. Yeah. You know, or like a halfling could waddle through, you know. It, no, that's smart. That's really cool, Cross. I never even, even thought about stuff like that. That's awesome, man. Um, I mean, e even on top of that, like, do, have you ever used a tabletop simulator for stuff like that? Uh, I used it. Oddball did a one-shot. That was mm -hmm. the only time I've used TTS for, uh, like, D&D. &D, but we usually use Roll20. Um, yeah, that's usually the go-to. Our D and D stuff. Are you, I know we I know we were talk talking about this on the podcast. So sorry if I repeat pee myself, but for like D and D, do you usually watch Critical Role, or is that like just like a like a thing that you kind of um, just see every once in a while and you're like, yeah, I'll. I watched most of campaign one and then I, when campaign three started, I was following it for the first like five or six episodes. I haven't kept up much beyond that. I see clips and stuff once in a while and they're funny. Uh, obviously, you know, when Travis does anything, it's, it's a great time or right, whatever. Right. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not something I heavily follow. I don't watch a whole lot of people playing D and D. Uh, I just mostly either play myself when I get the chance or lately it's been Baldur's Gate because I've been back into that. Oh yeah. Isn't things. that just like D and D, but video game. It's it's literally fifth edition of the video game, yeah. Larian. That's what's up. That's easy, dude. I mean, is there what else? What else are you playing right now? Are you just uh, Star Citizen, Baldur's Gate three, uh, still occasionally like League of Legends or something like that. It's kind of whatever tickles my fancy. Honestly. Yeah. I, I've been putting off playing the Final Fantasy fourteen patch because uh, I've just been painfully addicted to Star Citizen. <laughs> I haven't I haven't gotten around to playing. Did 14. they did they re update Star Citizen? 
Uh, it's. I mean, it gets updates every once in a while. The new. Well, one like I on thought, the they dropped a big one, or maybe that's the it's, one it's coming. coming out in a couple yeah. Weeks, yeah. Oh, okay. The salvage update and all that shit. Yeah. 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 I, dude, I like, I like jump into it for like a couple weeks when they do like big updates, and then I'm like, okay, cool, because like my um, my patience for games like that is just a little thin because I don't have a lot of time. So like, that's fair. Yeah. You know, I don't want to spend thirty minutes flying. You know, and not really playing the game. Um, that being said, though, there is that game that's like Star Citizen, Bethesda making it. Um, oh, Starfield, yeah. Yeah, that looks a lot of fun, too, though. Yeah, I've been seeing more and more about it. Yeah, um, I definitely think that that will probably run buggy as all hell, though. <laughs> yeah, it's Bethesda. Because it's Bethesda, <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure the mods on PC will be dumb like give it like oh, two great. weeks two two weeks and you're gonna have like space ak's Probably. maybe you'll maybe you'll even have a, a, a tahoe like in halo yeah i was, I was just about to say yeah like <laughs> space <Halo> tahoe <laughs> no dude i, I <laughs> that show that i like tried to watch it i never did. like <laughs> <That's> <laughs> i tried. i was like okay everyone hates it but you like i'll watch it you never know. And uh, as soon as I saw Master Chief Cheeks, I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I was like, I was like, that's it. That's it. Yeah. I'm done. Well, dude, like, um, God, they just killed the Witcher, too. Uh, yeah, because that whole controversy with, uh, well, it's not even a controversy. It's quote unquote a controversy with Cavill trying, supposedly trying to stay faithful to the originals and shit talking the writers and then the writers didn't like it and said he was like a misogynist pig or some shit it's weird i don't i haven't read the whole situation but that's basically no I neither i mean like i yeah because i think like i think from what i was watching a guy like break down the concepts of it all and like give his own little theories and something that i really agree with is that um the writers for the new season um wanted to make something new so like away from the books um, which when you say that, it sounds really good, you know, having like a, an ability to watch a show about like a young Geralt, you know, yeah. when he like, that sounds amazing. It's fun. But when you're making it to defy the original, that's the problem. And that's what yeah. they try to do a lot of the time. And it sucks that they keep doing that. Like with like Halo now, the Witcher and you know, the last of us looks like it's going to do the same thing as well. Hopefully not. I, I mean, like not. I really, I really, um, am praying but you never know. I, yeah, I'm, I'm praying for the near anime. I haven't started it yet because it only just started. I think it's still one episode in or two. Uh, with near being one of my favorite series of all time, uh, I am terrified of the anime adaptation. I liked it. I liked <laughs> it. But the thing is, is I liked it coming from somebody who has no fucking clue what's going on in that. That's fair. I yeah. played the games and I was like, yeah, I don't know what's happening, but I'm here, you know? <laughs> it, it, it takes it takes a bit. It's kind of like Dark Souls. A lot of the story you have to kind of read into. Yeah. Well, like, I remember, I, I knew I was confused when, you know, in the game, when you kind of go into that, like, side-scroller shooter part when you're, like, flying... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, and I was like, I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah, Yoko Taro just was like, yeah, yeah, you know what? You're playing, uh, you're playing Super Mario now. <laughs> and then, like, okay. and then you switch from uh, two B to fucking nine S. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, I was like, I was like, who was that? I was like, they look the same. I it's I was all over the place with it, man. But I had like, played um, I played uh, Replicant back way back when it was just called Near. I never beat it originally, but uh, I played it back then. Then Automata came out, and then I played uh, Replicant one two two. Isn't, isn't there a newer one that came out as well? It's 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 the remake of Replicant. Uh, oh, there, there's okay. a mobile game too, which is Reincarnation, but that's kind of its own little thing i thought yeah because i could have sworn i thought that there was an other one that came out that was like you're you're human again because i think it's near as like the humans are dying right so so yeah uh i guess spoilers if you happen to be playing the near games uh yeah the one from like 2002 from, yeah from like 20 of what 2010 i think is when the original near came out uh, yeah because near near the funny story about near is it's an offshoot of a joke ending of dragon guard i think three uh <laughs> which makes it funny but no so near the first one essentially 
you are how do I put it? You play as Nier, either Papa Nier or uh, Young Nier, depending mm -hmm. on if uh, the version you played. And you are. It's revealed later in the story that you're a replicant. And the shades, which are the the monsters you're fighting, are the actual like souls of the humans left over. Uh, they're the the gestalts of the humans. Is or a replicant like a cyborg, or is it like a? It's it's like a no, not really like a, cyborg, a Blade like, Runner. Like uh, kind, replicant. Kind of, it, how do I, how do I? It's it's more like a clone. Like, okay. It's more like a like a clone, like a biological clone. So they're they're not real humans, but they are humans. It's weird. Right. Um, the whole story behind it. And essentially, you you basically kill off the human race, uh, but you don't. Yeah, you sure. think you are humans, but you kill off the human race, and then that's like a big plot point in Automata is you think the humans are alive, but the humans are actually dead for like the last ten thousand years or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then, so the new one that came out is it's a remake. A remake. It's a, yeah, oh, it's a okay. Remake of, of replicant, yeah. The OG, okay. And it, it adds one more ending for uh, for Kaine. Oh, because there's so there's multiple endings. Yeah, there's five endings, I believe, for both auto. Well, okay, technically it's twenty six. Oh, but there's five only? actual endings because they there's a bunch of joke endings they do. Like if the one mission you're playing in Automata, you can go fishing during the mission, and if you go fishing, you get an ending where it's like two B was too busy fishing and the world ended or some shit. It's it's a bunch of goofy stuff like that. But oh, there's, uh, okay. there's five actual endings. Uh, a, B, C, D. Uh, I think for both games. Can you can you can you stay as two B, or do you um, have to switch to the you? You other end one? up switching. You so root A you play as two B. Root B you play as nine S. Root C you play as two B, and I think it's C you transition. Yeah, C you transition into A two, who is the other the kid girl. with her. Oh, she, no, nine no, uh, S is the boy. Uh, mm. A two is the other girl, mm -hmm. and then uh, yes, C, D, and E are all essentially the same with slightly different endings. Okay. Interesting. It's like it's like the perspective of the ending changes, which gives you more context on the end. Right. I I've never I never knew that it it was so in depth. That's yeah, they're, crazy. They're actually. Yeah. Games, Jesus Christ. Want. Um. Is the combat really good? Like, it, or do it's, you just kind of hang pretty, for the story? It's pretty solid. It's 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 okay. It's it's like it's half wants to be like Dark Souls or Kingdom Hearts, but then a lot of it doesn't feel weighty. It's really weird. It, it almost reminds me of uh, Final Fantasy 15 or like Final Fantasy 7 R in a lot of ways, where like you you hit things and like numbers pop out, but there's not a lot of impact and like you can kind of dodge things, but not really. Right. Uh, I think the most fun part is like it plays <laughs> like a bullet hell sometimes. So like there's all the balls that shoot at you, and mm -hmm. you get like you basically play like a 3D bullet hell. Right, and you kind of just like move. Like that That's them. funny. Really um, fun. You know, speaking of confusing games too, like Devil May Cry. It, you know, because like the way that cry. the way that you're explaining it to me is the way that I explain or like near to people. Or I'm sorry, hold on, Jesus, I'm confused. The way you describe the way like, you describe near to me is how I'm talking about DMC to people because ev a lot of people that I talk to don't know what the fuck is happening in DMC. I mean, it doesn't help that they release the games completely. Out of no, school. no, you have to like, <laughs> you just have to like spend time thinking and you're like, wait, so this happens then and that happens. Okay, cool. I'm getting there. You know, and like I had my friend play uh, the newest one Five and six. yeah, and, and, and he was like, why did that guy go cut off? Uh, what's his name's arm? And I was like, well, that's his dad. And he was like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, and, that's not an arm. And then, uh. What do you and then yeah and like you don't get it you don't get it and then v <laughs> um right v's his name turns into uh he turns into virgil yeah yeah turns into virgil which is funny because i never like thought about that but then you play the virgil like dlc yeah. and you're like yeah v means that. fucking virgil they like, v, yeah. it, the, it, it's like it the helped. most obvious it, thing. It, it didn't help. So if you were following the marketing campaign for when it when it led up to coming out, they revealed Nero first, then they revealed Dante. Mm -hmm. And then they had like V in the background of a bunch of shots. And they're like, yeah, the other character's V. And everybody's like, oh, you're just going to play as Virgil. Cool. And then it came out that it wasn't Virgil. And then everybody's like, oh, I guess it's not Virgil. And there's like, well, no, it's Virgil. It's like, oh, okay. He still is Virgil, I guess. You know what's funny, though, is... um. I never knew it was co-op, because it's not really co-op. It's a really weird co-op. Uh, 
It's like you see it's, other people playing the game at the same time. Yeah, and it'll just say they, like, load in. And you'll just kind of, like, yeah. look to the right, and there's, like, V, like, <laughs> halfway across the map doing his own thing. And I'm yeah, like, oh, okay. I remember seeing, like, because the, the first time that happened to me, I was going through, like, the subway or whatever, mm-hmm. and you, you run as Nero across the top, and V's fighting down the bottom, I think. Or it's the other way around, I can't remember. And I just remember seeing whoever it was trapped in a corner getting the shit beat out of them by there's like four or five demons just wailing on this poor dude in the corner as i'm running across this sky ridge and you're and you're just like oh that looks bad anyway <laughs> I was like, that guy. <laughs> not my problem dude i you know um one thing about dmc that i can't get behind though is that um i know that they've they've tried to get you to play as other characters but dante is like is my go-to i even like you know, I really appreciated all the characters. Like, even V's. V's character, not Virgil. You know, because they have different play styles. Um, yeah, V's character is so cool because he's never actually really attacking anything. No, and he's also the easiest character. Dude. It's like, hey, do you really need the triple S achievement? Just play V. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> I love the animations. I love his attacks. I just, I don't know, his everything about it. It is. But when you, but you just, get, when I found out that you could play as da- Dante, because I was really sold on the fact for a while, because they don't let you play as Dante for the first, like, seven yeah, missions. Yeah, like half of the game. Yeah. yeah, and so I was like, oh, I can't play as Dante. Oh, well. And, like, I don't like the arm thing. Like, the arms that you can buy for, uh, what's his name? I'm so I, bad with names. I think I preferred it in DMC4. I, mm-hmm. I like Nero, the way Nero played a little bit more in DMC4. But the more What's I his name, by, Nier? Nero. Nero. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like the, the artist or the philosopher, or whatever. Yeah. Was. Um. But I, I I enjoyed Nero a lot in DMC four and five. It took me a little bit to get used to it. There's still a couple of arms that I really didn't care for. Mm-hmm. But once I started understanding the mechanics, like when you learn how to ride on like the the rocket arm and do stuff like that, that's really fun. Yeah. And, I mean, like, are really fun. I I definitely have it is. I have a massive appreciation for Nero's concept, though. Because, like, the work that had to go into it um, yeah, to, like, design arms like that. Like, there's... I mean, the arms are the arms are a pretty nice, like, touch, though. Like, I feel like if, if I wasn't going to play as Dante, I would play as Nero. Also, he's voiced Johnny Young Bosch, my man. The fucking... It, the goat himself. <laughs> uh, you know... Ichigo Kurosaki. I... I think DMC, I got confused about DMC when they released, um, when you play as young Dante, essentially. I can't remember which oh, it, which remake, one it was. DMC, yeah, DMC Double May Cry, the remake. The yeah, um, and he didn't have his white hair. It was, but like, I, like I the don't. Play, but the story was garbage. Okay, because <laughs> DMC, but DMC 5 story is great. Yeah, it's, I think DMC 5 story is pretty all right. Dude, and it's I, than the remake, in my I, uh, uh, but Nero's really funny. He called me dead weight, and that's his entire <laughs> fucking character motivation for the entire game. Is Dante <laughs> called him dead weight, and he's like, I gotta get that guy back. Where is uh, he? Dude, you know, <laughs> I implore you if you don't have a friend that's played it, I need you to get them to play DMC5, and then I need you to be around them. When Dante starts dancing with his hat on, oh my god, I've seen and just clips. see their face, and they're like, "Huh?" Because they've never played a Dante before. <laughs> this one's pretty serious compared to some of the other ones, so it's really confusing when Dante hits the gritty. So, yeah, it just starts busting it down, <laughs> and like, and like, I'm there, like, yep, that, yep, like, yep, that, that tracks, like, yep, and everyone else is like, yeah, I have no fucking idea what's going. On. I, I wonder what they're gonna do with, uh uh, the n- quote unquote new one, whatever they're gonna call it, either six yeah, or whatever. Well, it's probably gonna be like Dante and Virgil fighting their way through hell or something, something like that. You know, in, in honestly, uh, regardless of the story, the combat has always been very fun for me because you remember the older DMCs where you could switch weapons with your triggers. So like you could, in yeah. I hate DMC five now that has I need too many styles because like I like trick being gun, able trick to gun. yeah. And, like, you, I think you can still get some swaps off pretty quickly, but um, the triggers are where it's, like, at, like, like, like left and right. So, like, you're picking up weapons, Yeah. you know, so much easier, and you can just do so many different attacks. I feel like the D-pad slows me down 
Well, that's because that's a carryover, I think, from DMC3. I think DMC3 is where they introduced the, the styles, I think. And that was in 4, and then obviously went to 5. Right. Um, Which, I I mean, I appreciate. It's just... I love, the, I love, like, just swapping weapons left or right. I mean, they did that in uh, God of War as well. In the old God of War, if you pressed a trigger or something i believe you would pull out a different weapon i never played god of war i had the, xbox the OG. 360 yeah i had xbox 360 um that's that's like speaking of the weapon switcher that's like something that i uh i think kingdom hearts 3 did really well i don't know if you played the kingdom hearts series but the weapon swapping it's like the game. very the very first one i played uh, oh that's yeah. like in my opinion the worst or the second worst behind chain of memories i really don't like the first game and people give me shit for it but uh, everything after Kingdom Hearts 2 is fantastic. Well, I played it when I was so young. Because I'm 25 now, so I came out when I was... I'm 23. Yeah, so, God, do you know when it came out? Uh, the original one came out in 2002. It just had its 20-year anniversary. So I was, what, 97, 98, 99, 2, 2. So I was, what, 4, 5? Yeah. And um, I remember I had it... Uh, for a while, because I, I remember playing it when I was, like, eight or nine, like, when I was actually, like, cognitive. Um, yeah. And it was Sounds very different. difficult for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got lost all um, the time. It wasn't until I was, like, ten that I was able to start beating those games. Oh, dude, and I would see Scooby, and I would just get so mad. I don't know, my dad would tell me stories, because, like... I don't know why Scooby's voice when I was young pissed you me Donald? off. Or you mean uh, Goofy? Or, yeah, Goofy, sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> his, like, uh, voice <laughs> used to make me mad. I was like, why does he sound like that? And so I would, like, listen to him talk, and I'd just be like, ah! And, um, it, but, like, I don't even remember the game. Like, I remember playing it, and I remember, like, you know, there was that girl you had to save, and there was that like dude with the, like the, the open zipped open coat that was in yellow. Yeah. And I remember the very first mission you were on the island, and you beat him up, or you got beat up with a stick. And like, oh yeah, yeah, Wak- Waku or whatever from Final Fantasy X, I think, or some shit. Yeah. Yeah, and I was just like, I was like, I what the hell is this game? You know, yeah, like, it's, I it's just was really like, weird, huh? Especially if you don't understand a lot of the source materials, the same, like, Final Fantasy characters walk around, and you're like, I don't know these people. Like, yeah. I don't know like, Disney people. Who the fuck's that dude with, with the big sword? I don't know him. <laughs> and then you get, like, a key, and you start beating the shit out of pe- people yeah. with it, and I'm, I just, I was lost through the whole thing. Like, God, yeah, I don't even remember I that. I, I should go back and play the other ones, because, like, I, I started to rotate into, like, the more mainstream games. Honestly, if you like Devil May Cry, you might like Kingdom Hearts. It's it's not as like flashy or complex as Devil May Cry, but it definitely has. It's it's like a, I always describe it as the midpoint between Devil May Cry and Dark Souls. You think so? Yeah, it, it might. has it has the hack and slash elements of of DMC, but then it has like the blocking, the dodging, the boss patterns of like Dark Souls. Do you uh, do you ever play that Mickey Mouse uh, like paint? game i played it briefly at my cousin's house because he had, okay like, you know what i'm games. talking about yeah, yeah um, it's it was very like dark like for a mickey mouse game it was like yeah, a dark game and, like people get like absorbed into the black paint and you'd have yes. to like it was bendy before bendy was cool yeah <laughs> jesus i i don't even old school games here we're talking about old school games like apparently D D. god dnd has been around for fucking ever yeah, too D and has been around for a long time Jesus. And uh, they're trying to burn it down. <laughs> yeah, I know you didn't want to go too much in a tangent there, so... You know, that is for the listeners uh, to go on their own investigatory adventure yes. and find out and why he said he said that. Investigate OGL. Investigate OGL. Uh, OGL! And OGL! Inform, OGL. And, and, and form your own opinions of OGL 1.1. <laughs> it's not very good, but... <laughs> moving on. Oh, shit. I mean, yeah, speaking of all the bad shit, I mean, like, YouTube, you know, I know we're posting this on YouTube, but I feel like they're digging themselves in a hole, man. But, like, there's not a competitor, and it sucks. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier, is there's not... It just sucks, because both the viewers and the creators are just kind of stuck. I wish... I wish there was a way that they could, like, fight this more. I don't know. I mean, it's owned by Google. So, like, yeah. I don't even know how you could fight that. Because it's <laughs> yeah, Google. fighting Google? Well, now, you might as well just come out. Yeah. 
<laughs> fucking <laughs> you're to toot your own horn somewhere else. You have a harmonica I have on six. your desk. <laughs> Why do you have six? Oh god, harmonica six. hour. <laughs> Why was that so heavy? <laughs> it's a box. Dude, you just got you just got harmonicas. Yeah, Why? Because like, like when my my great grandpa passed away, I got like a little box of like cool blue harmonicas. They're Yo. all like different pitches. So like, then I have like <laughs> they're all different pitches. That's uh, but, yeah. So, so I have funny. six harmonicas. I don't know how to play a single one. I mean, <laughs> I couldn't imagine they're that hard. There, there. I've I've heard people who can play harmonica. There's a lot more skill into it that I don't understand no even the basics of. Are you big? Like uh, oh god. Loki, I think can actually play their harmonica. I think it's Loki who can play it pretty well. Well, Loki fuck some shit up. Yeah. He's got a lot of weird talents. Did Did he ever tell you about the time he doxed me to myself? Uh, no. <laughs> It's. I love telling Did everybody this. IP? No, uh, my Spotify was connected to my Discord, and he just sent me my full name. Oh, that's so funny. Oh. <laughs> and he's like, I didn't know your name was this, this, and this. I don't know if I should say this on the podcast, but do you remember when me and Freyer caught you lacking on Discord? Oh, yeah. With the orc game, I think. Yeah, was- yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, I don't go offline to, to do that. <laughs> I, hey, I'm a grown-ass man. PSA. I have... PSA for anybody who might be listening. If you are doing anything that may or may not be suspicious that could show up as game activity, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, turn your game activity off or go and I know, it. bro. You get, it's your fault for looking, bro. I'm a grown-ass man. I have a house. <laughs> yeah, you're right there. I got a house. I bought my computer. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> I, he sent me a screenshot. He was like, got your ass. And I was like, I was like, mm-mm. I was on the notice that was like, hey, oh, that's so <laughs> funny. That's so funny, dude. I even, I think I sent him a rating. I was like, it's pretty good. Yeah, so not dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> oh, oh, God, that's so funny, dude. Yeah, no, Loki, um, and I tell this story to everybody because I think it's hilarious, but he, um, he just one day out of the blue, like, sent me my full name. Um, on discord and i was like thank he was like yeah that's a really cool name and i was like i was like thanks and he was like yeah i wish i had that name and i was like lucky this is weird <laughs> and i was like i was like how do you know and he was like you're spotify and i was like fuck i did the same thing to, i think it was doc it was somebody in c1 when i was still in c1 and they had their name as their like google pro a google account for his <laughs> for a c1 and we were having like a meeting and i addressed him by his full name he was like what the fuck yeah <laughs> yeah i did that i, I did that with chard but chard doesn't hide it very well if you know what the i doc mean doesn't hide anymore either no like they don't hide it very well so it's like i yeah it's just you see it well like canon um i would send him google docs too and you would see it and like it's just his email and i was like oh okay <laughs> i was like you know i feel like there's just like an unspoken rule that you just like kind of like like look at it and ignore it you know like yeah that's so funny dude i mean like i always i told myself to try to keep as autonomous as possible but like you know it just it happens i guess it is what it is well because i remember when i first got it in here and they were like hey give me your email address and they were like, and i was like i'm not doing that because my email address is like just my name oh yeah mine mine literally is too <laughs> yeah and so i'm i'm like it's, i'm it's not basically doing my that. full name <laughs> I was like, I'm not doing that. And he's like, well, I can't let you into C1 without it. And I was like, oh. Burner email time. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, here, man. Because the problem with that is, like, um, you know, it's connected to, like, Google. So, like, if I make a burner email, I'm going to have to go through so many different hoops. Like, to either get back to my normal profile where, like, all of my shit's linked to. You know what I mean? Like, so That's I why I have different browsers. Yeah. It's just easier that way. I have, like, one email signed into one browser and one email signed in the other just to be yeah. easy about it. You know, speaking of different getting different things, too, I might go and buy a second monitor here soon. You don't have a second monitor already? Uh-uh. No. What kind of gamer are you? Um, a pretty casual gamer. SMH my head. <laughs> You just say shake my head, my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, dude, I just um, I like never really cared about it, and then like I went, I go to like work, and I have three, and I was like, 
I like started to be like, oh yeah, this is the shit, you know. And then I like go to my insurance agent office. Like I don't usually stay there, but like one day a week for like an hour or two, and they have two two monitors too. And like so everywhere, I've just gotten so used to having two monitors, and I get home, and I have one, and I'm like, this is whack. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I'll, I'll be there, be like, man, people get addicted to crack, and just just stop forehead, and then I I turn off my second monitor, and I'm like, oh man, I can't function. <laughs> yeah, seriously, like, it's like, oh, maybe, maybe that's why. Like, I get it, I get it, man. I don't, I don't knock it. I might, I might have to go get one. I might just replace both of my monitors though, because I want to get. Uh, if I'm gonna get a second monitor, I want to get one that has. Um, like God, how do you describe it? Like the edges, the black, you know, like the the where like your monitor meets your screen. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess there's a term for it. I don't know. Like the like the monitor. edge of the like monitor, low, like where a low profile. Like yeah. A low profile thing. Yeah. So like both screens kind of look like they're kind of like touching yeah. one another without any like deviation. Um, I'll, I'll probably have to invest into two of those instead. Um, just cause the matter I have right now is a pretty hefty, like border. And I feel like I having two would just kind of like, wait, um, do you have one like hor- horizontal? No, nah, no, nah, both of mine. Uh, my second monitor is actually my old monitor. So I have two 27 inch monitors. One's 1080p, one's, uh, 1440. Um, and then I used to run the one, the 1080p one with like a 19 inch little fucking TV as my That's second funny. monitor. That's so funny. This real tiny little TV I use as a second monitor. And then I decided to get a new monitor because, um, this one, the 1080p one goes, uses a VGA, not VGA, mm-hmm. whatever port it uses. Uh, my 2070 doesn't have a port for it. Mm. And if you use HDMI, you can't get 144 Hertz. So... I went and got another uh, 144 hertz monitor that I could use in my 2070 and then just have this one hooked with HDMI because I don't need 144 on my second monitor. Right. You know, well, like some something too, I have a PlayStation 5 right next to my PC and I've always been like playing Arma and I'm like, dude, I could be like, I could be playing something on my PlayStation right now. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, and I found a way how to link the audio. Nice. With like, um, with like a merger. And you just kind of run the cords through. And it's it's not that complicated, but it wasn't easy either. Um, but so the audio plays through um, and it's super fucking easy to be able to be able to find a way to play my PlayStation and be on Arma at the same time. Cause like it's the unfortunate truth of the fact that when you get into platoon or like I'm sure I'm sure you know this like you're so high oh, in yeah, leadership exactly. sometimes that you are kind of just big chilling in the back maybe not with oh, Munka yeah. I feel like because Munka, Munka might be vibing more, yeah because yeah, like you guys are a lot smaller so one Munka platoon is you know smaller than like Kyber at least it you know should be well, yeah we we operate as essentially just a fire team so yeah it's pretty much all hands on deck if we do anything right and but whereas I mean, like mean, though because when we first were created before we changed our sop uh that was back in our old campaigns when our ops were really really short mm-hmm. so we'd have like a 45 minute op and 35 minutes of that op we would just be sitting in a lot afk yeah <laughs> right and that's what i'm saying and like um you know even as platoon medic now like there'll be a lot of times where i'm just sitting with fraser while they're talking just sitting just staring like at the wall and then, like, every 10 minutes or something, I'll be like, you know, all mics and I get a med check, and then they'll say their colors, and I'm like, yeah, hey, Fraser, they're all green, and then, like, go back to, like, staring. And, like, you really do, I think, trade um, your fun for everybody for else's. Yeah. yeah, and it's a fair it's a fair thing, because Fraser and I get along really well, so we just kind of shoot the shit. That's and why like, you cool show up on your other. off day, because you can have fun on your off day and then suffer on your on day. Lear poked me and said, pokes you. Thank you, Lear. Jesus Christ. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I guess that kind of wraps it up because we're hitting about 50 minutes here. So, I mean, Cross, do you have any last words? Any any fun statements you'd like to make? Anything you want to... Oh, I got put on the spot. (laughs) Any last last words, Cross? Oh, no. uh, 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 I put my Uh, harmonic away. uh, No, don't uh, shoot. uh, uh, (laughs) Um, He's me in the- <laughs> no, um, yeah, I mean, that's really it guys. I appreciate listening. I hope everybody had a good holiday. 
Hope everybody had a good New Year's. Um, are we off winter stand down officially across now? Yes, we are. Okay, uh, so cool, awesome. So we um are still operating. We actually, I'm not sure if I've mentioned it before, but might as well say it twice. Um, second platoon got moved from Sunday to Friday. So anybody that's listening, if you can make it, um, 6 p.m. both those days, right, right cross. It's Friday, 6 p.m. Yep, 6 yeah. p.m. load in, 6.30, step off. So if you guys can make any of those times, if you're listening, please feel free to jump into our TeamSpeak Discord. All that's going to be linked on YouTube below. If you have any questions, um, I'm a recruiter, so even myself, you can reach out to me if you see me on the Discord. Um, I always have my phone on me. But anyone in the union is more than happy to help to get you sorted. Um, Cross, I much, much, much appreciate your time. And, uh, yeah, awesome. Had fun. I'll do it Thanks. again if you have time for me. <coughs> I'm sure I'm I'm sure I will. Thank you. Bye everybody. <laughs>